Kate is how do you know what time it is? Yes, of course I do, Mark. It's block party time. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> yes, it is how it is Maximum Fun's block party this week and next week. We're trying to get the entire world. We have our people of the world, but we want the entire rest of the world to know about. We got this with Mark and Hal and to know about all the great shows that we have out on the Maximum Fun Network. We just appeared on a block party episode of Judge John Hodgman. And we have our own block party episode, which is, of course, the famous mashed potatoes episode currently streaming now on Maximum Fun's block party YouTube page. That's right. <laughs> you did it. <laughs> I know. The I game was we're it. not going to say know. that's right. Wait, I'm gonna that's why it, it was up. so difficult. I'm going to pick it up. I'm going to pick it up. No, no. Keep this in, Ken. He no, did never. it. He couldn't go one promo without saying that's right. Whatever. You have a projector that's sleeping on your couch like a brother-in-law. <laughs> For those who ha- can't see this video, that makes no sense. There's just a projector sitting on my I can account. see it. Sometimes it's just for me. Get in on all the block party fun and discover some other great shows on the Max Fun Network that maybe you aren't listening to yet over at MaximumFun.org slash block party. That is where all the info is on all the wonderful things happening during block party. But for now, please enjoy this episode of We Got This with Mark and Hal. You are correct, sir. That's right. Hello, I'm Hal Lublin. And I'm Mark Gagliardi. Since the dawn of humanity, one issue has gone unsettled. With the fate of the world in the balance, we're here to settle once and for all. Best lead singer. That's right. Don't worry, everyone. We got this. Podcasts should have a theme song. Podcasts should not have a theme song. Yes, they should. No, they shouldn't. They sound good. Yeah, but people are just going to skip past it. Hmm. You know what? You're right. We got this. Are you ready to rock? Seriously, though, Hal, are you ready to rock? Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. <laughs> See, I don't have that. I don't have that sort of rock star falsetto. I, I didn't can't know, do that. I didn't know I had that till I tried to do it one time. And I was like, yeah, that's this exciting. Works. This works. What an exciting yeah. thing to find it out. It could have been me leading ACDC. <laughs> but it was, and it was two other dudes who we'll probably talk about, but mm-hmm. we're not going to do it alone because this is a wide ranging topic mm-hmm. and we wanted to bring in a musical expert mm-hmm. and there's no musical expert. I, I mean, he's got guitars in his background for God's yeah, sake. I see him. It is pedal steel master, guitarist, musician, actor, entertainer, genius, Mark McConville. Hello, my friend. When does the musical expert get here? <laughs> no. yeah hi hi buddy. Hey, buddy how are you i'm good i'm good i'm excited good so are we i made a document oh boy you did oh, oh you yeah did. oh this i took is it right. very seriously i i made a document as well i knew i knew i knew i knew that you mark mcconville would come into this super like whatever we chose whatever it was mm-hmm. from, from the list that you gave us you would come in like impeccably prepared I'm not sure if your listeners need a look behind the curtain, a little peek. Why not? You sent a giant list and a mm-hmm. lot of them were, t- <laughs> a <laughs> lot of them were, and a lot of them I went, no, I, yeah. I can't speak to that. But the ones I sort of floated, very mm-hmm. excited. That's how we get you to come back. Cause we, yeah, we, that's we right. I'm already oh, like, like, when do we sign me up for uh, mm-hmm. another one? But oh, that's yeah, right. Yeah. Those topics aren't floating, McConville. They're dangling from a fishing pole that we're walking <laughs> from behind you. So I'm a donkey? Yeah. I, I, you know what? The metaphor fell apart a little bit. Uh, okay. Let's talk rock and roll music. Let's talk lead singers. Let's talk about your experience as a music listener and a music practitioner. Mm. Do your eyes gravitate toward the guitarist on stage? I know primarily yeah. your guitarist. Yes, all the time. Yeah, I just saw St. Vincent. Mm-hmm. Ooh, very live cool. Live at the Hollywood Bowl. And Did she have was, a full band? Would she have the orchestra? No, she had a band, uh, and she's great. But I was watching Jason Faulkner, the yeah. guitar player, who probably no one knows his name. But I was like, <laughs> well, you do. Jason Faulkner's in his inner band. <laughs> this is great. I'm going to watch him. He plays guitar, and I don't understand what he's doing. Meanwhile, St. Vincent, <laughs> a legit front woman, Mm-hmm. Yeah, is very entertaining too. It's not like I, I'm split focus. I'm watching the whole thing, but because sure. I play guitar, I do tend to watch guitar players. 
Let, mm-hmm. let me ask you this, because this will either widen or narrow the field. And it's something that Mark Gagliardi and I were talking about via mm-hmm. text. And mm-hmm. oftentimes, I know that you, Mark, want for the sake of brevity, so they don't hear all the guts of the decision, to just go, here's the shortened list. But this one I felt, I, I like to sort of discuss and show how mm-hmm. the soup gets made. Do you think, for the purposes of a front man, would you count people who have a backing band, but the band has a name? Some examples Ooh. would be like... Bruce Springsteen in the E Street Band, Buck Owens yeah. and the Buckaroos, Buddy Holly and the Prince Crown. and the Prince and the New Power Generation, Prince and the Revolution. My argument initially was that that doesn't sound like a front man. That seems more like if theirs is the name that is on the album that gets released, mm. then they're not a front man, that it is their act and the band is peripheral, not peripheral, but part of their act. See, I wanted to ask the same question. I wrote this down. What are we actually talking about? Because right. is mm-hmm. Phil Collins only the front man of Genesis and you can no longer consider Phil Collins a front man once he goes solo? And also I, same, same yeah. question for Peter Gabriel. I will, I was specifically about the band Genesis was what got me thinking about this. I'm of the opinion and tell me what you guys think that hmm. front man is a job within a band. Like that is, there is the guitarist, the bassist, the drummer, the keys, the front man. That is one of the, one of the jobs to fill within a band. So if we are talking about their work as a front man, if we want to talk about Rod Stewart, we can talk about Rod Stewart being in five different bands in the seventies before going off as a solo artist. Uh, if we want to talk about Phil Collins, we have to talk about Phil Collins in reference to Genesis when he is doing the job of front man. Does that make sense? And would you guys agree? So, yeah, I think we're saying we're arriving at the same point because my thing is like, does a band (laughs) suffer without this person? Inevitably, great front men and women go solo. Sure. And uh, we we use front men. What word should we use? Well, that's also another another question in uh, like of the parameters of this is like, is the best front man actually a woman? I mean, you've got some Possible. epic ones in there. You've got Stevie Nicks and uh, uh, Debbie Harry, and you've got... I would argue you, Diana yeah. Ross, because they were the Supremes before they That's were right. Diana Ross and the Supremes. Mm-hmm. On my list. And I also... So, but would you include, I agree in general, like Phil Collins, mm-hmm. the solo artist, who I went with my cousin to see when I was a teenager. Oh, boy. With the hopes, I had my fingers <laughs> crossed. I was like, all I really want to see is Phil Collins play the drums. And we went to the Philadelphia Spectrum and he played the drums for 15 minutes. And then as soon as he started into singing, I was like, well, we can go. And then we left. You guys left at my mom's car. Yes. Hal, can I ask (laughs) you a follow up question? Yes, please. Did they make you wear a jacket? (laughs) No, there was no jacket required. Got it. (laughs) But I would argue that that the E Street Band is the same group of people. And to not have Stephen Van Zandt or all of the other amazing Clarence Clemens, all the amazing uh, well, RIP, but the amazing band that he had there, they were all mm. a group. He was the front man of that group and certainly the most indispensable. Springsteen member. was the front man of that group. Yeah, Springsteen was the front yeah. man of that group and the most indispensable member, but that is a cohesive band that still, that is still producing music together. It's not yeah. like a rotating group of, of city musicians. Same thing with, with Buck Owens and his Buckaroos. It's, I mean, it's Don Rich and then the, the rest would sort of cycle in and out, but. He had one of the best pedal steel players of all time uh, in, in his band. Um, sure, but you're, ain't nobody going to see the news. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you need Huey Lewis. Yeah, or it's not. So I think that. I don't know. Maybe we're just dancing around the inevitable sort of mm. once someone leave. I mean, another great example of the parameters of this is Journey, where Steve yeah. Perry leaves and they find a replacement. And the band mm-hmm. lives on. And all of these sort of like, I mean it in a very respectful way, but mm-hmm. the, the geezer rock revival festivals that are going on where like the Eagles don't come anywhere near this list, but right. the Eagles are a Frankenstein up band right now with mm-hmm. Vince Gill yeah. playing guitar. And I think <laughs> Fry's son, I believe is wow. It's like children yeah. of the band, original members. And yeah. So. I think I saw one I member I don't of Leonard Skinner. Saying. I don't know what I'm saying when I say that. <laughs> you don't go to see the news, but also, who would Huey Lewis be? Like, name a, a big Huey Lewis song that doesn't include, that isn't by Huey Lewis and the news, where he went off, where, like, he didn't, he never had a no jacket required where he went off on his own. It's like, he had a die hard. 
they talk about it's... sports and <laughs> and the Back to the Future soundtrack, and that's yeah. all like all with and, the news and grooving together and grooving together. Yes, isn't that with Gwyneth Paltrow? <laughs> Is it? Oh, that's right from duets. Yeah. So that's, oh that's how I'd like to start my list, which is Gwyneth Paltrow, front woman. <laughs> well, I think there we you have go. It. <laughs> Asked and answered. Well, does that help with the parameters of this? Because I got a ton of people that are worth consideration, I think, but also okay. mm-hmm. probably not the top of the list. Do you know what I mean? Sure. They're yeah. on the mountain. Yeah. I think it's going to be case by case. Like, I would fight for Bruce Springsteen to be in there because that band is integral to him. Sure. But there are other people, like Jimi Hendrix. Yes, he had a great three-person band, but... That was called the Jimi the Hendrix, Jimi Hendrix experience. experience. Yeah, that it was, it was all about him. Here's an out, a sort of a, sort of one that fits in with this. Mm. I don't think he's the goat or is necessarily a contender for the goat. Dr. What Jim. about... Dr. Teeth and the Electric Mayhem. Yeah. He is an amazing front man. Yes. Oh, man. Now I want to put Dr. Teeth on this list. Other people sing that Dr. Teeth and Electric Mayhem, aren't they more like the Eagles? Just just sing sometimes. They swap. Yeah. Yeah. They swap around. So let me ask you this. For Christ's sake. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Okay. Does a front man do all of the uh, primary singing for a band? Is Stevie Nicks a front person? Yes. Yeah. Has to be. Yes. Yeah. And, and I would add, I think maybe the absence of an instrument definitely puts you in. Sure. Tambourine. Tambourine's an instrument. How you're, dare you? You're right. And scarf. <laughs> <laughs> Let's meet scarf. the band on the scarves. <laughs> Just, it's all, all silent sounds. And in the back, juggling cotton balls. It's my buddy Mike. You can't hear him on this live album. We wouldn't be here without our fellow laying on a mattress the whole time. Let's hear it. <laughs> Billy Joe. This guy's been rubbing two t-shirts together for six songs. <laughs> She's mostly like the lead person. I mean, yeah. I know Mick Fleetwood is there, but she is the vo- she is the voice. I would call her the voice of Fleetwood Mac. It doesn't mean other people okay. don't sing, but like, you know, early Beatles records, Ringo got a song on every album. You wouldn't call mm-hmm. him the lead singer. That's true. I wouldn't call any of the Beatles lead singers though no no yeah no, no, there's no. not a front man are we also limited to i know you've brought up buck owens which i think is a great sort of door to open for me which is mm-hmm. our nobody talks about country yep. as having mm-hmm. a front man or woman mm-hmm. and nobody talks about rap as yes having a front man or woman and it's tough because a lot of times those are solo artists like jay-z is unreal mm-hmm. right and he's mostly just him talking into a microphone with a DJ. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right. Or like, however the beats and the sounds are produced that aren't vocals, that's not him, but he is, I guess, fronting that band. If you want to call it a band. So are we limited? That seems like we're getting real loose. Saying that Jay-Z is Jay-Z in front of a DJ feels a little bit too loose. Yeah. For this particular He also doesn't check the box of, you know, Phil Collins solo. Right. Right. Yes. Isn't it? Isn't it that he's not fronting a group necessarily? Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. He is no. his own person. But and, I would argue like one of my arguments, one of my big mm-hmm. ones that I think is not acceptable, but also worthy of conversation is Hank Williams. Okay. Junior or senior? Senior. They okay. cut out the stage at the Ryman and put it in <laughs> the Grand Old Opry. Every country singer who sings in Nashville on that stage stands where he stood. Yep. He had the same band pretty much his whole career. Sure. The news. It was was very short. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But you know, he is the gold standard for traditional country music. I don't think Mm -hmm. he's the best front man of all time necessarily, but the respect is there. And I don't think he even comes into the top 10 of conversations. If you are limiting it to rock and roll, obviously he's not making the cut. I think you have to right. go into other genres. But I also think for me in rap, it's generally either a solo artist or like a tribe. Like the Beastie Boys are a tripod. All three of them are important. Right. A tribe called Quest to me is Wu-Tang. a tripod. You could say you could say Q-Tip is sort of the front man of that group. It's fine really, and I will fight you. Yeah. Exactly. Without fight. Like <laughs> you can't have without fight. Q-Tip is the most well known because he was on it like beat from. 1990 to 1993 he was on every other track you heard and that's mm-hmm. a testament to his how great he was but that is a group wu-tang is a collective 
where they're like everybody's in it and there's no like who's the lead person you can't pick a lead person yeah um, all right and and in the in that in the rap sort of world i think it's hard not to just go like well snoop is an amazing rapper no matter Mm -hmm. who he's with yep Mm -hmm. and another one i think of is ice cube who yeah. I guess was the front man of NWA, even though the rest of NWA didn't think he was. And he right. left to go out on his own to prove it. I think this is the sort of Icarus wings of being a front man or a front person. Oh, it's going off and being a, going off and being a solo it's artist. It's going like, well, I, I can't, I can't be in this box of this group. I have to, yeah. I have to go soar towards the sun. So they ha- so you think, it, you think a requirement is success beyond the group that you're fronting. Uh, I think it's a case by case basis, honestly. Okay. okay. Yeah, it doesn't seem like a like, not a requirement for it being considered a front man, but a criteria in considering the best one, I think. Yeah. All right. So with that, let's jump in and start talking about some of these fronts. I'm just gonna start using fronts. We sure. haven't jumped in yet. No, we haven't jumped in yet. We've, oh, we haven't we even have recorded been, anything. We have been none of this is recorded. <laughs> yeah. We were just chatting. This is mm-hmm. rehearsal. Yeah. Uh, no, we've been setting the parameters. I think we've set some pretty good ones. So let's go. Here is uh, frequently on this show the way we will uh, when we have a wide ranging topic that has a lot of different possibilities. We will break it down in some way and give ourselves finalists and then pit the finalists against one another. I think a way to do that today for this one would be to do it by decade. So let's start and we're going to pull one from the 60s, one from the 70s, one from the 80s, one from the 90s. And inexplicably, that decade that began in 2000 and ends in the year 2020. That's all one thing, apparently. (laughs) Oh, okay. Yeah, just doesn't it feel like everybody goes 80s, 90s, 2000s, right? Like that just all gets lumped in until the 20s start. We don't really talk about the 2010s a lot. Exactly. I didn't consider era at all in my list so okay uh, great this will be great yeah great so uh, so i will give you the ones that i have on my list to start and then any of yours that are from the 1960s we will put into this original uh semi-final round there's nobody from the 50s i don't have anybody do you have anybody from the 50s i think uh no he's from the 60s i'm looking now well i do have one that's that's from way before the 50s What's it's that? The, it's the Pope. Oh, okay. Oh, sure. sure. The Pope has hundreds of followers. Mm-hmm. Has never gone solo. <laughs> no. He's the Dread yeah. Pirate Roberts of frontmen. There's That's true. so many hymns. <laughs> yeah. And oh. people are singing along to his music. That's true. You got to think and about And have been for thousands of years. They thousands still of years. sing the same yeah. songs. None of them got old. No. Longevity, baby. <laughs> well, I think we're done here. <laughs> yeah. I oh, but Jeff Buckley also did Alleluia. Oh, so okay. Yeah, yeah, all right. Okay, well, uh, all right. I'm willing to sort of table the Pope for uh, for <laughs> later. Bet you are. <laughs> all right, uh, let's jump in. First of all, we're going to start in the 1200s, the Pope. We're going to jump to the 1960s, mm-hmm. though technically one of these did start his uh, band in 1959. And the ones that I have on the list here are Roger Daltrey from The Who, Jim Morrison from The Doors, Mick Jagger from The Rolling Stones, and John Fogarty of Creedence Clearwater Revival. What do you have from the 60s? Diana Ross. Diana Ross. Yeah, what about Frankie Valli, too? The sequel Although to Frankie Valli? You know this time sad? it's personal. When I see Frankie Valli perform now, with like when he does like a 4th of July thing, and he can't... Mm-hmm. You know, like his whole thing was that falsetto that he could rip into and he can't really do it anymore. So he just has the crowd sing like he sings like the first part. He's like, so let's. And then he holds the microphone out to the crowd and they sing the rest of it. Oh, it's the best. It's what John Bon Jovi does because he doesn't want to sing living on a prayer's high parts. He goes, oh, we're halfway there. You sing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to get a sandwich. Yeah. (laughs) Living on a prayer. They refuse to change keys. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, like I, just saw, I also re- like I've been on a tear seeing some outdoor live music. We're so spoiled in L.A. I mm-hmm. saw Beck too do sort Ooh. of a warm up show at the Ford because I guess he's maybe going out on a big tour. I and love the Ford. He played Deborah, which is all high falsetto. And I went yeah. it, mm-hmm. the minute it started. I was like, nah, this is a different key. <laughs> you can just straight up. Tell. It, I could tell I don't have perfect pitch. I think there's a relative pitch. Sure. It's like if I can hear it in my head, I can go, yeah, that's that's about a step and a half down. And then sure, <laughs> wait a minute. We put it on in the car. I was like, yeah, yeah, that that was not what he was doing tonight. 
Billy Joel too. He can't yeah. hit high notes anymore, and he just changed the keys. Yeah. You I like old. that you refer to. I don't have perfect pitch. I have relative pitch, as long as it's relative to something else, which you then describe being the perfect pitch that was already in your head of what that song was. <laughs> I just mean if you played a D sharp on a piano, I wouldn't be able to tell you that it's a D sharp. Sure. Right. But if I hear it in some context, sometimes I can say, yeah, that's that's a different key or that's the key. Well, to uh, anyway. Who do you have from the 60s on your list? Who are you talking to? Mark McConville. Got it. I got I, have, I got from hell. I got Diana Ross. I also have Diana Ross scrolling my list. I have Hank Williams, who I mm-hmm. believe is maybe from the 50s, 40s, maybe even. No, yeah, well, William senior. I should know this. I think it's fifth. It's 50s. OK, mm-hmm. we'll put him in this category. The early years. Yeah. David Bowie is probably 70s and not 60s. Yeah. I mean, he started in the very late 60s. I would put him more in the seventies if we're gonna put him. Mm-hmm. But the only uh, band the only I other one I have is the only other one I have is Mick Jagger, which is telling. It sure. feels like this is respect to John Fogarty and Jim Morrison and Roger Daltrey. This feels like a two way race. Then it sounds like because everybody was like, "Oh yeah, we'll definitely Diana Ross," and "Oh yeah, we'll definitely Mick Jagger." Yeah, thoughts. I maybe I have one more that might be the sixties, which is mm. Billy Gibbons. Who did Billy Gibbons front? ZZ Top. For ZZ Top? ZZ Top I would put right. him in the 70s. I would say I think 70s. he's 70s too, but I think it's like 71. Right. Right. Like yeah. it's, yeah. it's, he, they've been, uh, by the way, for a very long time. There are like four or five in the 1960s. We already have like 15 bands in the 1970s. So if we want to add him to this category, I don't have a problem doing that. I don't think he's going to win in either decade. Yeah. But it's good to mention him. Yeah. He's like, ZZ Top is a, is a good band. Classic, classic, uh, seventies band. Just classic for 70s. longevity's sake, like they, he yeah. has been doing this as long as almost anybody. Yeah. Except Mick Jagger. True. It's weird to think that for them, Eliminator was a breakout album that happened in 1983 and was really them applying their like sort of bluesy style of music to what was popular at the time. Like they basically were like, Oh, we can do this. And then they did really, yeah. really well. And they're their great. They were great live. Yeah. Oh, I bet. ZZ Top. I wish loud, I could have seen Loud, them. loud, loud. <laughs> have, have you guys ever seen the Stones? The Stones are here this week, right? In LA. Really? Yeah. At I your think. place? Are they in the back? They're right here. Uh, you guys, you didn't know this. Rolling Stones, come on out here, will you? <laughs> um, <laughs> oh man, this is tough because look, if we, if the first thing we do is eliminate Mick Jagger from who? best front man of a ball bo- of, of all time. Uh, that, that like for Diana Ross, nobody, I could, for Diana Ross was the only one I could think of. No, I, I think I don't think you can do that because I think yeah. Diana Ross went solo, and I mean Mick Jagger is still fronting the same band. Yeah, he tried yeah. to go off on his own. It just wasn't like he's never as good as he is. He's like um, Captain Britain from the comics, where he gets weaker the further away. Captain Britain, <laughs> for those of you who don't know, has all of these superpowers, but the further he gets away from Britain, the weaker he becomes. So how Mick Jagger do, has to be with the Stones. How does he do in colonies, though? Oh, he's fine. Those are satellites. For right. and Wi-Fi, <laughs> hots, and Wi-Fi hotspots. He's it's fine. a little weaker, but not <laughs> full loss of power. Got it. That's how you can tell how strong their political hold is in a region still. As they send him there, they're like, how do you feel? Oh, terribly, terribly, terribly sorry. Uh, we must pull out of this region. Turns out he does not feel British at all. Let's leave. Right. <laughs> Hurry, he fell asleep as soon as he arrived. <laughs> My goodness. Yeah, I think it's it's got to be Mick. It's got to be right. Mick. It's got to be Mick coming out of the sixties. Sure. Yeah. All right. So that's one one uh, finalist already. We kind of knew it was going to happen, but uh, it's now official. Mick Jagger going to the finals. Let's talk about the nineteen seventies. I am going to. Uh, I have a few on this list. It is a fairly exhaustive decade for frontman. It does seem like it was the era of the killer frontman. And I will uh, begin with Freddie Mercury from Queen, Robert Plant from Led Zeppelin, Steven Tyler from Aerosmith, Ozzy Osbourne from Black Sabbath, Ronnie James Dio also from Black Sabbath, Debbie Harry from from Blondie, Joey Ramone from the Ramones, Jeff Lynn from ELO, Joe Strummer from The Clash. McConville, do you have anything to add? Probably. Oh, yeah. I have George Clinton. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Again, this is... I don't necessarily think George Clinton is an electric frontman the way that others are, but no, also yeah. he 
he is in his lane and has been doing it much like Billy Gibbons. <laughs> I just respect the sort of like, this is what I do. I never, he, I don't know that he ever needed to go solo. I don't really know yeah. the sort of intricate ins and outs of P Funk and Parliament of the, of like, the yeah. spaceship of the mothership. Yeah. But I've seen them and it was great. And he knows I mean, exactly what he's doing. Yeah. And I think I, he's worthy of a nomination. Maybe not full consideration but it's yeah. worth bringing up oh i think it's great yeah i saw him in 94 at Lollapalooza. i saw him in, with the p-funk all-stars and it was great and that was around the time do you guys remember it might have been a, a year or two earlier when there was a bootsy collins impersonator that was like circulating around the country and every time <laughs> mtv news came on kurt loader was like the bootsy collins impersonator still at lot like for several weeks this was a <laughs> top large. story wait at large like he was committing crimes yeah he was going out there i don't know what he was getting out of pretending to be bootsy collins Oh, so he wasn't saying I'm a Bootsy Collins impersonator. He was saying I'm Bootsy, baby. Somebody, no, somebody out there was pretending to be Bootsy Collins. Yeah. That's who I mean. That that person who decided the best way to like to pull off a confidence scam was to wear big star glasses and platform heels, like to dress like Bootsy Collins. Cause nothing says confidence. Yeah. Him and Gallagher's brother. (laughs) Gallagher too. (laughs) T-O-O. That's right. <laughs> Man, I was just flipping through the channels and Gallagher was on earlier and it was some like late era Gallagher. He was wearing a cowboy hat and he was in the middle of the sledgematic bit and he really looked like he did not want to be there anymore. Like he was just, oh, I guess I have to do sledgematic now. And he's literally at one point he stops. He's like, it slices, it dices, it. it's all the way over there. And he walks across this. And it wasn't like he was doing it as a bit. So some of these guys, I have to respect some of these classic old geezer rock, as you called it. The guys that are still going out there, they've added that new song to their repertoire about everything that they've learned. Right. Are we still in the 70s? Yes. We're still on the 70s. Yeah. What else? What else do you find? I have Stevie Nicks. Yep. Mm Mm-hmm. And I have Lionel Richie. Oh yeah, the Commodores, of course. Yeah, and I would. I only have him on there because I've seen him as a solo act live. Dude slaps. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's unreal. He's and so you talented. sort of go like Lionel Richie. Do I need to see him? Like what? And then you know every song. Yeah, yeah, he's one of those guys. Like you don't realize how prolific his career has been. Yep. Yeah. I would add one more. I know this band probably had its greatest success in the eighties, but they were born of the seventies and that's the B-52's Fred Schneider. I think he's in. Oh, I was going to put them in on the eighties, but, uh, I, I was putting, by the way, these categorizations are not like first album or formation <laughs> there. Yeah. Uh, I would put them on apex. Okay. Then he'd be the, I think even rock lobster was like 1980. So maybe that is, I forgot one, which oh. maybe he just gets disqualified because he's his own thing, but James Brown. Yeah, never fronted yes. a band. I looked that up. Yeah, he I was, a, was I like, well, James Matt Brown's him up. Yes, he does have people backing him up. He's an incredible conductor. Like, yeah, he would yell at you. Apparently, he was a mean front man too. Did you ever yeah. see he hear any of these stories? His band money if they screwed up live <laughs> like, on the holy spot. cow. <laughs> Do you know that about him? Make him the best. Do you know about Flash and Five? No, no. He'd be playing, and if his band messed up behind his back, he would like flash five like on his hand and like point at a guy like you messed up tonight that's 50 bucks whoa <laughs> oh, no yeah that's <laughs> that's not the best front man oh. i mean but, he, music, but his music guys, was tight his music was tight yes. yeah untouchable music is incredible all right let's talk about some of these uh big contenders out of the 70s i want to talk about freddie mercury for a minute yeah obvious the joy that freddie mercury had in front of a crowd so fronting a band that's playing to 500 or i don't know how, how big live aid was what two hundred thousand people three hundred thousand out there it was a lot yeah it was 30. a lot i think it was just 30 people yeah it was 30 people out there lot, so it seemed like yep. there were more oh i you know what i saw i saw the uh the digitized zemeckis version where they added all those extra uh people i'm sorry did you say farm aid uh, live aid live aid oh yeah, yeah. i thought you said f- farm aid which is i not- may have said farm aid when was farm aid 
it was close to the same time, 86. Maybe. Wasn't that Willie time? Nelson? And it's probably not uh-huh. even called that. Kenny Rogers was there. Yeah, no, was that was Farm Aid. It was, oh, yeah. was Farm Aid? Okay. It was, yeah. Live Aid was so successful. They raised like a hundred and like $27 million in 1984 or 80, 85. Yeah. Um, and then Farm Aid, I think, was the year after. And they're like, we can do this too. And they did. Anyway, thanks for listening. Freddie. <laughs> Freddie. <laughs> Freddie. Yeah. Freddie Mercury. Sort of untouchable. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he has He's it all. Pretty, pretty amazing. The look. The, yeah. The sound. Uh, like unmistakable. You cannot think of Queen. Like once he was gone, there was no way for the band to legitimately continue without him because it was. Yeah. He was Queen, even though there are other talented people. And that movie that they made would make you think that they were constantly having to make up for him being mm-hmm. so irresponsible. Wonder which members of the band were responsible for producing that. Let's look it yeah. up. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Adam he, he... Lambert. Clap, 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 clap. Adam <laughs> Lambert. Clap, 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 clap. Did you see when Queen, when, uh, I think it might have been Adam Lambert's season of, of American Idol, when Queen, the, the band, the, the surviving members of the band were there to consult. So it was Queen Week. Yeah. And one of the actors was like, or one of the singers, actors, one of the singers wanted to do, uh, we will rock you, but change the clap, like change the rhythm of the clap to make it fit their style. And Brian May was like, no, you can't change the clap. Like got so mad at him <laughs> immediately. You're like, Oh, this kid's going home this week. He tried to change the clap and we will rock you. You know, there's a thing I, you just got me thinking about Freddie Mercury v- just vocally. Because, mm-hmm. uh, you know, a lot of these guys are charismatic singers and a lot of these guys are, you know, decent singers who are who just happen to be really energetic. Freddie Mercury has all of that, but he's also an incredible singer. I think that's one thing that we have to look at in this, too, is just I mean, you listen you listen to another one bites the dust and him going on those runs when there's nothing but a bass underneath him mm-hmm. and just the things that that guy could do with his voice. I want to talk about Robert Plant next because he's another one that it's just like they had that weird alchemy of they happen to be a charismatic front man who also happens to have, in Robert Plant's case, this insane scream, this banshee voice that he's got. And in Freddie Mercury's case, just this operatic masterpiece voice. How much do you think that the quality of the actual singing itself and... I'm talking vowels and consonants and technicality comes into play. It just depends on what avenue of rock and roll you're walking down. Because I can't, yeah. you know, Joe Str- like punk guys, Joe Strummer, Joey Ramone. That's they don't not need his, exactly, yeah. you know, Kurt Cobain. Not a lot, like, mm-hmm. not a mush mouth and not a lot of melody. Yeah. And yet, iconic, iconic rock and roll frontman. So it's hard to say. Let's reward. I lean towards a more melodic singer, no matter what. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm going to tend to lean towards those people. But yeah. I also very much enjoy music where I don't even know what they're saying. So I don't know. Mm-hmm. I uh, I certainly think musical ability should be a factor in who you're choosing as the greatest front, <laughs> the greatest lead time. singer. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I like Robert Plant a lot, but he benefited gratefully from having one of the greatest drummers, greatest bass players, and greatest guitarists yeah. of all time in the same band with him. So it wasn't like, yes, he was out in front in that he was singing and he's got a very unique voice that fits the band really well. I don't know that it mm-hmm. would have worked as well with anybody else plugged in there, but it also felt like an equal four way partnership that made that band work so well. Cause you think, yeah, you do think about the singing sometimes, but I think in my opinion, the most memorable part of Led Zeppelin songs tend to be either John Bonham's drumming or the guitar riffs that Jimmy Page is playing. Yeah, that's true. I, th- my first thoughts when I think about Led Zeppelin are of guitar riffs. All right. So does anybody kick Freddie Mercury off the top of this mountain? We're in the 70s, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I feel like Ozzy became Ozzy in the eight. Like he certainly Black Sabbath is a great band, but he became the Ozzy that we think of in the 80s. Yeah, that he really, did, really he didn't. He like... didn't em- embrace the whole macabre thing and mm-hmm. become that until. Yeah, I would, I would agree darkness. with that. I also would say it's the seventies, but really this person dominated the early eighties. Sting. Sting, yeah. Yeah. I've got Sting listed in the eighties section here. Yeah. And I would also say honorable mention for the seventies, but probably more in the eighties, Getty Lee. 
from Rush. Oh, sure. But I can't oh, say sure. he's a great front man. I just think he's interesting. I yeah. know what a giant Rush fan you are. I'm a I'm a moderate Rush fan, but I watched <laughs> the documentary on Rush. Yeah. I really recommend it. It's really, really beautiful. Right on. Check that but out. But I, I don't know if they're seventies or eighties. They sort of bridged the gap. They yeah. were certainly yeah. making music in the seventies, but then Well, like I said, I I feel like just for the sake of putting them into groups and categorizing them, I tried to do at least this version of it on when their peak was. I don't think anybody's I say sting touching, in the police. Nobody's no, touching Freddie Mercury. No. Yeah. From and also, right even like uh, if you look at ACDC in the 70s versus the 80s, when you had Bon Scott versus Brian Johnson, like mm-hmm. just it's they're so they didn't like fully realize themselves until they got Brian Johnson because he became that more like, yeah, 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 as opposed to Bon Scott is like, well, I was bouncing to the left and to the right. Like it's, <laughs> he almost sounds like a cartoon <laughs> character. Yeah. So as tragic as his loss was and as good of a front man as he was. Brian Johnson really became the front man of that group. And I think Angus Young is more the standout. Yes. He's the one who dresses like a schoolboy. It's funny. I, like, it's the same way with David Lee Roth. Like, the band's called Van Halen. Like, David Lee Roth did everything he could in his crazy pants antics to be the one that everyone was looking at. But everybody's looking at that red and black guitar and watching Eddie Van Halen, who's the namesake. He and his brother of the band. His brother, right? Alex was his yes. brother. That's right. Like that's their band. But yeah, I think nobody can take it from Freddie in this one. We'll talk about that next decade. Yeah, we that's sure right. will. <laughs> yeah. We absolutely will talk about that in the next yeah. decade. Yeah. Well, let's go to the next decade then right now. So it's Freddie Mercury coming out of the seventies. Is that Freddie right? Mercury's coming out of the seventies? Mick Please. Jagger from the sixties. Let's go to the eighties. We've got Bono, David Byrne, Axel Rose, James Hetfield, Sting, Peter Gabriel, David Lee Roth, Fred Schneider, Vince Neal. What else you got? Al, I'll throw to you. I think this feels pretty good to me. I, there wasn't one. I, I don't remember any from the eighties that I, that I stood out was like, Hey, this, this person as well. But do you have, are something? you mad? I forgot Sebastian Bach. No, no I think no, that's no. okay. Susie okay. Sue. A little shout oh, out yeah. to my wife, Susie Sue. Susie yeah. Sue. Susie and the Banshees. Yeah. Susie and the Banshees. And then we get into that kind of a Peter singular Bell. style of like golf yeah. rock that really. No one else was doing. Yeah. yeah, I in the '80s, it's my complete blind spot. The the music my wife loved growing up is absolutely. We play <laughs> in our house like the Smith. Is this the Smiths or is this Morrissey? <laughs> <laughs> and that's another guy who like. Do you have to put Morrissey on right. the list because the Smiths are unbelievable? And yeah. you have a lot of emo stuff. That's I guess it's rock, but I wasn't listening to that stuff because at that time I was mm-hmm. completely immersed in the electric guitar. And I found mm-hmm. so much of like the echo and the bunny men of the world who I love now. Mm-hmm. Back yeah. then, I just thought there's nothing here for someone who's learning guitar. It's, it seemed so rudimentary. It just never clicked. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. later I could in life, I could appreciate it for the songwriting and the mood and so many of the other things. But I was so much more interested in guitar hero stuff yep. rather yeah. than yeah. cool solid, licks. solid songwriting and ethereal sounds and stuff like that. So. Uh, you said David Byrne, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Do we have uh, when was Joan Jett? We didn't mention was Joan, Joan Jett, Jett and the was the Runaways. Hearts? Was Runaways the seventies? Runaways was that the beginning 70s, of the eighties. Yeah. Can you name a Blackheart? Yes. No. Jim who? Blackheart. Is that true? It's not in the band. It's just a guy who lives in South Dakota who I found yeah. in the phone book. But uh, I, I, I can name I a real Blackheart. I've had some band. real Blackhearts in my day. But like. Like, I know that Liberty DeVito is Billy Joel's drummer, but I, I only know too. that because I'm a bit, yeah, because, because we're, we, we at some point were huge Billy Joel fans or still are. Like, you just know those things. I think you could make the case right. that Joan Jett is an awesome front yeah. woman because of that. I cannot name mm-hmm. a Blackheart. I also think Chrissy yeah. Hine from The Pretenders is an awesome. Yes. Uh, but it's a mood. It's not flashy. Yeah. And I also cannot name a Pretender. That's not her. So yeah. what about, but this feels, the eighties feels like you can put Bruce in the seventies. You can also put him in the eighties. You can name multiple members of his band. They have not changed. They have come up together and like, like they are, even when he goes and does his like streets of Philadelphia or one step up, two steps back and he does his solo stuff. Mm-hmm. It's never as good as, as when he's with the e street band, like that feels like the best version of him comes when he's funding that band. And they are the ultimate, like, even now playing 
stadiums, it's like going to see them in a bar. Like they somehow have managed to keep that spirit alive. And that's in no small part due to who Bruce is as mm-hmm. a front man. I'll allow it. Look, I love Bruce Springsteen. It was the best concert I ever saw was here at the auditorium before they tore it down. He did the entirety of the river, both LPs of the river, and then played for another two hours, turned the lights on and played for another couple hours. It was amazing. If we are counting Bruce Springsteen, even though it is his name on the albums, Mm -hmm. if we are carving out that exception, I'm 100% down for Bruce Springsteen coming out of the 80s as the best front man. But there is one that I want... There Uh-oh. is one this that is I want to point out. It is not disagreement. No, no, but McConville's he's he's you're, sitting you're on disagree- his hands. You're sitting up. What are you sitting on your hands for? Well, because if you're going to do this to Bruce, I feel it invites David Bowie and Prince to the conversation. Oh. Then I don't think we can do it to Bruce. Oh, I think I think right. we have to stick with our rules. Yeah, I'm going right. to throw out there, and I know he's a because he's he's been an Feel eye brilliant. roll ever since we all got that album that we didn't ask for on our phones but bono as the front man for u2 has to be an all timer right the guy's got an amazing voice he can sing in any genre he's been the front man of the same band forever any genre what other genres has he done well, he's, I mean, he's sung with orchestras and he's, sung, I mean, I'm just vocally okay. Okay. outside of you two. He can musically, I think he's got the skills for it. Sure. What do you guys think? I just, I'm, I've never been a huge U2 guy. And I've also like, I will divulge no. this at this point in our conversation. Mm-hmm. I've never been a big Rolling Stones guy. So that's very fair. hard. Fair. I, I, I respect Mick Jagger's career and his mm-hmm. abilities yeah. and I respect Bono's and honestly, Hal, Bruce Springsteen too. Those three, no, I, that's fine. they're giants, but the, I just have, n- it's never really touched me the way other artists have. And so I, I, mm-hmm. they are sort of these monumental talents that I don't have any personal investment in. So it is very yeah. easy for me to be like, Bono, no way. Yeah. Yeah. When I think about Bono, I think about lead singer of U2. I don't think of him as the front. I, I just think of U2 as an entity and I know he's the outspoken person in that group. I mean, he is the front man. I just don't. If I compare him to David Lee Roth and you're asking me which one is a better front man for a band, I'm going to say David Lee Roth 11 times out of 10 <laughs> because of the energy he puts out. Because so do you think it's that, David Lee Roth for the 80s? Well, I, I just would say that that Van Halen was never the same after he left. The Hagar version was like, it just felt like they were trying to become adults, like they were all looking for a house yeah. together as opposed to like rocking <laughs> out. That's what David Lee Roth brought. That's why they never... They were never as good why it was such a big deal when David Lee Roth came back because the band wasn't the same. As great as Van Halen is, as great as his guitar work was, it just Mm -hmm. that band without David Lee Roth would not have been the same group. He's you can't discount how important he was to their success as the the guy who was willing to be the face of that band. I fully agree and would say that nobody like Mark, you alluded to it earlier saying like every, all eyes were on Eddie and I don't agree. Yeah. I do mm-hmm. think that David Lee Roth, his manic energy, vocally wild. I don't know if you guys have ever heard the stems from running with the devil. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Where you Wait, can sort of like whistle tones. You can pull down the bass and the drums and the guitar and just leave him or just you can kind of mix it yourself. Yeah. If you just, if you peel that away, his, he he's unreal. In the late seventies through nineteen eighty four, look, that- I have no pro. I, I'm down for some David Lee Roth. I say a lot of things on this show uh, off the cuff, Mark McConville, yeah, that sure. just come out of my mouth. I appreciate David Lee Roth's sort of like nuttiness and his mm-hmm. cheesy game showy. <laughs> yeah, like at the end of the, uh, the Hopper Teacher video, when they do the sort of like Eddie's in a mental institution, and he went on to. And Dave went on to host a game show. It's like, yeah, he, he probably did. Of he course. Had, but <laughs> I just think like Eddie Van Halen is gathering the cosmos and shoving it through a guitar every yep. night. Yeah. And David Lee Roth is matching him. And I think the reason maybe that he had to go was that David Lee Roth mistakenly thought, well, I can do this without him. Right. And did try it. And I mm-hmm. like those first two David Lee Roth solo records are. Something special for me. I don't think they're journey. good. I can't recommend them to anybody. 
I don't hate I his remember. comedy. He says with a giant grin. <laughs> he was such an egomaniac. Yeah. He did Eat Him and Smile in Spanish. Do you know this? He made, no. he made his, he made, <laughs> he has an album where he's got very colorful sort of, I don't know how else to describe it, like tribal makeup on. Yes. And he made that album in Spanish too, because he thought, I'm so big. My solo career is going to be so huge. I better reach out to the Spanish speaking market as well. Wow. <laughs> Not just one track. He did the whole album, huh? Yeah. I already and have I all lo- the English speaking world on board. I love it. To branch out. I do. I do have to say if I took the like heavy hard rockers on this 1980s list, I would say of the like, you know, the hard rock bands, I would say you've got James Hetfield. David Lee Roth and Vince Neil on this list. I'd say of the three of them, all great front men. Mm-hmm. Uh, David Lee Roth would be the most fun out of all of them to why he seems to be the one that's like, Hey guys, you know, we're making loud, fun rock and roll music, right? Like that seems to be, he brings the party. That is a thing that I think we haven't really hit on with this, which is mm-hmm. does this front person know what the job is? Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like David Lee Roth, not that Vince Neil doesn't know what's going on right. or something like that but yeah yeah there's just when if you watch old videos of van halen he is just dialed in yeah there's just something unassailable yeah. about the party that was late 70s to early 80s van halen yeah and early eddie van halen like he never could have been the front man he used to hide he used to like turn away from the audience because he didn't want anybody to crib his guitar style like that was he wanted to protect the way he played because to him that was proprietary and what made the band special and he was right David Lee Roth thought that his performing made the band special, and he was right. When they separated, Van Halen was much better off because the three of them were there, and they found a serviceable front man. And David Lee Roth covered, did a cover of Just a Gigolo that I actually enjoy. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, even more than than Axl Rose, and that band, you know, Guns N' Roses isn't Guns N' Roses without him. It's also not Guns N' Roses without Slash. So yeah. there's another person you can subtract that will make the band way, 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 way less. Which is true, I guess, of Rolling Stones also, but yeah, we'll get I'm, to that. I'm just a dumb David Lee Roth fan who thinks that he's a massive lightning bolt of rock and yeah, roll intensity. Is. I've never seen anything like it since. Do you know yeah. what I mean? There has never, there's not been a band that I've been like, whoa, that electricity is here. I've seen a lot of different bands and been impressed by them for other reasons. I yeah. just can't think. That's why I am such a fan of him, even though I think maybe musically he's not there. Mm-hmm. You know, I saw a yeah. sting with the police on a reunion tour, and that really made me assess the police again. I grew yeah. up listening to them, and he's great. Mm-hmm. And the, the police are a nut. They, they're maybe the only other band that I thought they had a brief flash, right? Four or mm-hmm. five albums, I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he's great, and he's a hell of a singer, and the songs are really interesting and. You know, that's another thing. Oh, another thing that I have, we've not said, but I think is important is sort of a signature sound. When you hear the yeah. second you, you hear them. them. Yeah. And so I think everybody is, we've talked about has that. Yeah. True. Do you think that David Lee Roth then is coming through from the 80s for us? I think so. I mean, we talked the about front man. 70 minutes. We, so yes. we did. <laughs> look, all right. Look, I'm down. I think he's great. As long as we got the names out there of everybody else that was on the list. We won't get letters. We have a mailbox. We get uh, paper letters all oh, the time. Like oh, like you read it's it. It's like the North Pole over here. Like Hal reads read all it. of them. Before we jump to the 90s, let's take a quick break. Let's let everybody calm down. They're all excited. Right. They're whipped into a frenzy by all this David Lee Roth talk. I know. When we come back. We will explore the 90s, the 2000s, and we will come away with the ultimate front person of all time. We'll be right back. Hey there, I'm Ellen Weatherford. And I'm Christian Weatherford. And we've got big feelings about animals that we just got to share. On Just the Zoo of Us, your new favorite animal review podcast, we're here to critically evaluate how each animal excels and how it doesn't, rating them out of 10 on their effectiveness, ingenuity, and aesthetics. Guest experts give you their takes informed by actual real-life experiences studying and working with very cool animals like sharks, cheetahs, and sea turtles. It's a field trip to the zoo for your ears. So if you or your kids have ever wondered if a pigeon can count, why sloths move so slow, or how a spider sees the world, find out with us every Wednesday on Just the Zoo of Us, which can now be found in its natural habitat on MaximumFun.org. Listen and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Podcasts. 
Video games. Video games. Video games. You like them? Maybe you wish you had more time for them. Maybe you want to know the best ones to play. Maybe you want to know what happens to Mario when he dies. <laughs> In that case, you should check out Triple Click. It's a podcast about video games. A podcast about video games? But I don't have time for that. Sure you do. Once a week, kick back as three video game experts give you everything from critical takes on the hottest new releases to scoops, interviews, and explanations about how video games work to fascinating and sometimes weird stories about the games we love. Triple Click is hosted by me, Kirk Hamilton. Me, Jason Schreier. And me, Maddie Myers. You can find Triple Click wherever you get your podcasts and listen at MaximumFun.org. Bye! All right, we're moving now into the 1990s. Here are the contenders for the 1990s as I have them. I don't have many, and McConville, I'm sure you can add some. Hal, I'm sure you can add some. This The reason I'm asking you, Mark, more specifically than Hal is I sent Hal this list before and asked him to add people to it. Gotcha. So it's not like I'm just going, these are my thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> so here is the list from the 1990s. I have Nirvana's Kurt Cobain, Soundgarden's Chris Cornell, Pearl Jam's Eddie Vedder, Stone Temple Pilots Scott Weiland, and Tom York from Radiohead. Okay. <laughs> Do you this have more? This is where I just think you have to sort of say when it comes to success, record sales, touring, Garth Brooks. Is he a Garth solo act Brooks? Though? Does he have a band? I think he's Garth a solo. A, I do think yeah. he's a solo. totally a solo act. Garth Brooks is, there's but he's no brilliant. doubt, superstar Chris Gaines. Dude a yeah. would swing on a rope that was attached to the middle of yep. the stadium still doing so it. that he would sw- is he really still? Oh, yeah. he swings yeah, out touring. so far oh let's see i also have uh dracula ooh and the, <laughs> that might I mean, be along with your pope section <laughs> the crypt kicker 5 is <laughs> you know you got igor on chains sure um <laughs> Dracula and his son, like he has to be a dad and, and son, yeah. make music. Sure. You know, this monster match comes along and he no longer has his big hit, the Transylvanian twist. Yeah. Whatever happened? To Whatever it? happened to it? They just got rid of it. Yeah. Uh. Back then it was like everything was on vinyl and they just, they no, I get it. it. A lot of gatekeepers, a lot of gatekeepers. Anyway, uh, he was reluctant to join, but then everything was cool. He's part of the gang. <laughs> this is the nineties. <laughs> Yeah, this is the '90s. Okay, I need my one minute of. Okay, I, this is, I okay. have one. This is a deep cut, and I don't really think that okay. this person is going to be taken seriously. Oh boy! And it's me going to bat for someone that I think many people will just be like, "Uh, uh-uh, uh." No is this way. your controversial take? Because you said in the email that you had a controversial take. Yeah. On this topic, is yes. this it? Oh, this I is. Wait. I believe this is it. Though my David Lee Roth stance is pretty heavy duty. Sure. It's Mike Patton. Who Mike is Mike Patton, Patton, the lead from singer? Faith of? No More? He was the lead singer of Faith No More. He's the lead singer of Mr. Bungle. He's yes. the lead singer of Tomahawk. He's yes. the lead singer of Phantomas. He's right. the lead singer of Peeping Tom. Sure. He's been in a ton of bands. Yeah. His vocal ability is unbelievable. He can do stuff with his voice that, like, his range is crazy. He's sung opera. So I think he just, he's so good at singing. And when you see him front these bands, like he gets a crowd going. I've just, I'm such a fan of Faith No More from growing up and I've seen them sure. live a few times. And I don't know. There's some, there's, there's actually sort of a mild tragedy to him that there, he isn't more popular because I really think his vocal ability is practically untouchable the other story that i will tell about him that i just think is worth bringing up is that my wife and my mother-in-law saw a serge gainsborg song night at the hollywood bowl mm. amazing and it was just a, a cavalcade of people yeah. singing on it and mike patton david lee roth out, singing in french mike patton came out and sang a song and my mother-in-law r.i.p was sort of like who is that how can I hear more of this person? Right. Who is he? What's his name? She got home from that show and was like looking. And I'm like, I don't know what I can give you because it's all going to be loud rock stuff where yeah. he is screaming. Yeah. But I just think he is so underrated as a singer and everybody just goes, Oh, he's the, you want it all, but you can't have it. Fish flopping on the ground. Guy. Right. Yeah. It's it. What is it? 
He sounds like Cobra Commander. <laughs> But I, I just, I love him. I think he, I love him. I want him in the conversation. There's something to be said for these journeyman guys. There's a few of them. There's, um, who's the lead singer of Bad Company was another one that, uh, had like five or six different bands that they fronted that they were sort of a, like a journeyman front man. Right. And I think, I mean, I think that is a skill in itself to be able to tailor yourself to different sounds and different bands. Yeah, I, I actually think Mike Patton is sort of the patron saint of the best front man might not be someone that we know. Yeah. If you want to talk about musical skill yeah. and versatility, mm-hmm. almost like you're saying like a side man. You know, there's these like right. Jason Faulkner with St. Vincent, the guitar player that I was mm-hmm. fawning over. I saw him play with Beck and he's played with a bunch of bands and I really like the sort of the journeyman side man sort of thing, but that's rare in a singer that somebody can just fill in here sing for these guys over here i don't know mm-hmm. you know it's so funny you brought him up because looking at this list i was like what about faith no more i actually thought about that because of how yeah. how big they were for at that candle burned bright and brief yes and and then he was on to mr oh no mr mr bungle might have been before or was it, it predates it predates yeah, faith that no was more. first yeah and then he sort of hot but i think the fact that Mike Patton is as great as he is, is hopped from band to band kind of yeah. works against him for this because he's not, mm-hmm. he's associated with faith no more, probably to most people who would know who he is more than anything. Yeah. Cause that was the band that was successful and they weren't around for long enough. He was already out the door. Yeah. So I think that works against him, but I, I'm glad you brought him up because he was on my mind as well. I have one more from oh, this please. era. Okay. Please. It's really an eighties, but it's a nineties. Mm-hmm. And I don't think he should be in this conversation. Because my personal feeling and theory is that he is tone deaf. Oh, <laughs> Anthony Kiedis from Red Hot Chili Peppers. Yeah. Yeah. He's been the front man of that band for so long. Yep. I, when I hear him sing, I'm like, is he off somehow? Yeah. And I don't love, I, I mean, it's fun, but I don't, I'm not a big enough fan to go like, man, man, but big energy from that guy. Every I feel time. like I was I was looking at him when I was looking at these and the best that I could come up with was he's fun to watch. Um he is yeah, Anthony Kiedis is technically a front man. Yeah, but well, I feel like about it. He's only been that's his only job yeah. he's ever had. Yeah. Yeah. I I mean I look and I I like him, but the one who draws my eye in that band is Flea. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah, know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, he is technically the front man. But Flea is the one that I'm watching. Maybe not. Maybe maybe I I will concede I was completely wrong about people watching Eddie Van Halen over David Lee Roth. But I think more people are watching Flea than are watching Anthony Kiedis. They're watching the whole band. People. Yeah. 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 The bass line is as important as the vocals in mm-hmm. the really like rocking and under the bridge. His uh looseness, <laughs> his liberal <laughs> attitude towards pitch. Yeah. It's yeah. probably most yeah, it's very... Uh, it's a style. Yeah, yeah it, is it is a style. style. So who are we taking out of the 90s? Who's going to make it through? Mike Pass. We haven't talked about Kurt Cobain. <laughs> I mean... Kurt, Kurt Cobain well, I, and Eddie Vedder both have the same thing. Like, the 90s was a different time. So we were out of the ostentatious 80s and into the more introspective 90s. So, like, yeah. Cobain, as loud as they were on, like, Bleach or... or or even tracks all the way through before their the unplugged album. He's more like way more. I think of him more sitting in a chair in a sweater. And Eddie Vedder, I think more of his softer stuff than his screamy stuff. So I feel like they got out of that pretty quickly, like within a couple of albums. But if, if of the people that I can remember from our '90s list, mm-hmm. it's Chris mm-hmm. Cornell. There's no I th- there's I, yeah. nobody mm-hmm. else. He. Well, if, Fronted you, you mentioned that thing about the voice too, and like having that distinctive style voice. He yeah. really, really more than anyone you hear. The second you hear Chris Cornell, you know it's him. Yeah, and he also Rage Against the Machine lost a singer, and he's like, "Hey, I'll come aboard, and we'll have a new band, which is just Rage Against the Machine, but me instead of Zach, and it'll be <laughs> great, and we'll call it Audio Slave." And yeah. mm-hmm. he had his own solo career, and he did a Bond theme. Yeah. And he's untouchable yeah. vocally. I mean, Freddie Mercury is maybe, I don't know that Chris is singing. Freddie is sort of untouchable, but I think Chris is a close second. Yeah. I powerful, absolutely agree. Powerful. Singer. Yeah. He's really good. Like the next time you listen to Black Hole Sun, 
him saying, we all know the chorus, but him making his way through the verse is yeah. really like, that takes a lot of talent to pull off yeah. as well as he does. A lot of accidentals in that song that he just yeah. glides right through like magic. I'm mm-hmm. happy with Chris Cornell. I'm happy with uh, Chris Cornell, 90s, too. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, From yeah. the 90s, Chris Cornell. All right. And then we only have four left. I'm putting in for the 2000s, which is the last 20 years, that 20 year decade of the 2000s. Yes, some of them uh, appeared before then. But for the sake of this, we, this is peak or near peak is in in this time period. So without further ado, Dave Grohl from the Foo Fighters, Jack White from the White Stripes, Chris Martin from Coldplay and Adam Levine from Maroon 5. Are there any other that I am missing from this Period. I mean, I'm that that you think are contenders. I love. Do you say it, Russ Ruiz? Nate? How do you say his name? From Fun. I think he's got an incredible voice. I think he's a great uh. frontman too. But I don't know if that guy from that band that I like is going to be on the Mount Rushmore. Now she had more success as a solo artist, but it's kind of hard to deny that she wasn't the lead, the front woman of Destiny's Child. That's Beyonce. She's on my list. Beyonce. Yeah. yeah. But she wasn't the front. She, I, I, they, I were, like the, they were a trio they were a, at that a point. Tripod, yeah. It'd be like saying yeah. Mike D was the lead singer of the Beastie Boys. Right. Even though she I blew up after the, him. She's undeniable. Yeah. Sure. Um, she's another one the from the 2000s that, well, uh, are we going 2000 to 2021? Sure. Sure. All right. I have Gwen Stefani. Oh, yeah. But I had Gwen days. Stefani in, in the night. That was the nineties though, wasn't it? Wasn't a uh, tragic kingdom. Oh, 90s? you're right. It is the nineties, but I don't think she's making it out of the nineties. I just think it's an interesting. Yeah. Yes. An important, she was yeah. an important voice that the was show, different than every other voice. The that show sort of ska of magic. Yeah. 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 I have Brittany Howard from Alabama oh, Shakes. Oh, Alabama Shakes. Mm, mm, yeah. No, just oh, more like. She's so good. Little shout out. Little shout out. I have yeah. Karen O from the Yeah, Yeah, Yeahs. Mm-hmm. It's another like energy thing. I love Karen O. I have Jack Black from Tenacious D. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he's a great two thousand three was the album. May I tell you this? I saw them live. They opened for Weezer. <gasps> and at one point Wait a minute. I, yes. In Long Beach? No, no, no. This was in Madison, Wisconsin. Okay, because I saw them that same tour. I saw them open in Long Beach. At one point during the show, I went, It's just two people up there. It's mm-hmm. just Jack and Kyle. And everyone in here can't look away like it was so wild and jack is just an electric performer yeah he is and he's pretending mm-hmm. like he's in the greatest band in the world yep actually there's yeah. no pretending uh no, I know they are the greatest <laughs> band in the world i have harry styles <gasps> is you he think he would you would you call him direction? the front well i guess like without in my in my sort of when he left the band fell apart I mean, he was sort of the linchpin of One sure. Direction. Sure. Just an interesting guy. Another interesting guy, Chris Stapleton. Mm. Chris Stapleton, Stapleton remind me who singer. Chris... He was the lead singer of the Steel Drivers, which right. is a country band. But now he is just, he is selling out arenas everywhere. Right. Yeah. Just like a singer, songwriter, but like a, an unbelievable talent. Worth a listen. Check him out. Why I am mean, I telling you to go listen to Chris I, Stapleton? I, I, had, I, I had a 90s guy. <laughs> who is more successful now, which is Darius Rucker. But I think he, be- I yeah. think he became bigger when he moved into country than he yeah. ever was, even though Cracked Rear View was such a huge out, which I still love. Yeah. And I love Fairweather Johnson. I love the follow-up too. I think, I think they're both really fun well, albums. I mean, here we are sort of like going like, oh crap, I forgot this. I forgot yeah. uh, Michael Stipe from R.E.M. Yes. By the way, many, most of these names that you guys are mentioning, I pulled off of this list when there were about 50 people on the list for quiet, the sake yeah. of time. We are yeah. going to have to choose one eventually. Right. This, if I may, I do think if we're going 2000 to 2021, there's uh, no better mm-hmm. frontman than Dave Grohl. Dave Grohl's the best frontman in rock. He knows the job. I have seen Foo Fighters live. Yeah. I got to meet him. And I, the thing I said to him was, I don't know how you do this. I mean, I know how you do it. But I don't know how you do it night after night after night. And yeah. he just was just like, it's the best part of the job. Like, I, <sighs> he fits that mold of, yeah, this is a giant rock and roll party. I want you all to be here. I want you all to have a good time. Yeah. You know, he's pulling people up from the crowd to play along with yeah. the band. Like, there's just so many cool Dave Grohl moments. And he seems like a genuinely great person to me. Yeah. Like, there's, there's a less sort of like, I am 
a rock god to him and more mm-hmm. of a mischievous like you're all invited to the Foo Fighters party. And I was not yeah, a fan when I which saw I them love. live. I was not necessarily a fan. I just was sort of like I had an opportunity to see him. I went. It was really great. Mm-hmm. I just don't. I don't know that anybody else really comes close. I mean, I like Jack White a lot. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think of some of the other names you said, but Chris Martin and Adam Levine. <sighs> Not for me. Yeah. No, Dave Grohl yeah. was like, he has an aura about him, which is another, like, there's an intangible about him, but also what would make him a contender among all of these finalists is in addition to all of the rock star qualities he has, he seems so approachable, which maybe is a function of him being wildly successful after being in one of the most famous bands of all time, like a groundbreaking band in which he was the drummer. So he got a taste of it with Nirvana. Then he got his chance to shine, was and is great, but also comes mm-hmm. to it with perspective. Yeah, I think he does come to it with the perspective that like a David Lee Roth maybe didn't have. Mm-hmm. I am a bulletproof rock <laughs> demigod. Yeah. And Grohl's sort of like, well, I, I maybe am that, but there's a falsehood within that, that w- it, this will fade. And so yeah. let me just keep the train rolling as long as I can. Yeah, it feels like the difference between uh, look how much fun I am and look how much fun rock and roll is. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. Yeah, Grohl has that. Look how much fun rock and roll music is. Gentlemen, it looks like we have our five finalists. Okay, so now is the tough part. Now we start eliminating them one by one. Hal, while I'm compiling these, will you tell us the order we're going to do that in? Sure. How many finalists are there? (laughs) There are one, two, three, four, five finalists. And Mike Patton. And Mike Patton. Uh, Mark McConville will start. Well, then you. I, who then are you, my five? Mark Gagliardi, then me, and then. Great. And then back. Uh, okay, so uh, you, the five finalists are Mick Jagger, Freddie Mercury, David Lee Roth, Chris Cornell, and Dave Grohl. So when I made my list, I categorized them as sort of like, these are interesting people to talk about. And then I have a category that's actual answers. How many of them? How many Four of, of the it? five are the actual actual oh, answers? Dave Grohl nice. was the only one that was not on there. That's why you're here. Let me just see exactly who, who was on there. Oh, Robert Plant was. Yeah, uh, I have my actual answers were Mick Jagger, Robert Plant, Chris Cornell, Freddie Mercury, and David Lee Roth. So you're saying I have to get rid of one of these? You have to get rid of one. one. Gosh, that's really hard. Oh, just you wait. As much as. Oh, look, this kills me because I have respect, Mm -hmm. but I think I'm a Mm -hmm. bigger fan of everyone else. And I think just because NCIS has been on for almost 20 years doesn't mean (laughs) I want to watch it. I got to cut Mick Jagger. (laughs) Wow. Wow. Awesome. All right. (laughs) I'm sorry. I know Rolling Stones fans are going to be mad. Out of their brains. Yeah. And he, but yeah, I just think. I don't know. I don't, there's something about it that is, I, I really appreciate pushing boundaries. And it's like, I feel like he did it. And now is, I'm going to dig myself in a hole. I'll just shut up. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry <laughs> to get rid of him. The Rolling no, Stones are, this is yeah. not all on you. This is, uh, this is it's all us. of us. We are collectively making this decision. If they come after you, they're coming after this show and we don't want that. No, you we don't read any of the feedback anyway. Sure. I do it from that mailbox we have. <laughs> at mailbox and things. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and the late and great and for no other reason than I think the other four on this list are the Mount Rushmore. The four remaining. The four remaining. Uh, of yeah, the four I'm remaining. Sorry. Of the four remaining on this yeah. list, I think Fine. that he is the... Let me t- say that whole thing again. Yeah, do you want to say it again or do you just want to eliminate Chris Cornell right now? Let me go ahead and start <laughs> before you. Okay. The next one I'm going to eliminate. I've looked at this list and for no other reason than everyone else on this list is a goat. I'm going to eliminate Chris Cornell, the epic voice of Chris Cornell. I think he has the pipes for it, but I think there's some front men out here that have more of the charisma. Oh, I'm looking now at who's eliminated. And I'm like, well, if you think of it in a round mount and a round much more in a Mount Rushmore <laughs> context. I just said Mount Mushmore. <laughs> you did. <laughs> Mount. I'm so excited. Yeah. <laughs> Mount Rushmore. I made a tragic mistake. Mick Jagger belongs on the Mount Rushmore of front men. For sure. You, what, you can't go back it. now. He does. Well, he was. We had five finalists. He was a finalist. To me, okay. He was a finalist. Yeah. There's, there's five presidents on that. 
thing I can Yeah, say. exactly. They're adding more okay. all the time. Cy Sperling, president of the Hair Club for Men, is on there now. I All right. So I, we have Freddie Mercury. We have David Lee, David Roth, Lee Roth and Dave Grohl. And Dave Grohl. Yeah. I think... I, I think that the eventual winner of this, I have to look at them and say, not only are they great at their job, but they are like, when I think of a rock star, that I could see their picture in the dictionary. And I don't think I would see Dave Grohl's picture in the dictionary. As great as he is, and as great of a front man as he is, as great as a person as he seems to be, and as incredible, I mean, he's been... I mean, Nirvana hit in 91, so it's been 30 straight years mm-hmm. that he's been out there creating memorable music and great music. And I just, I can't, I couldn't in good conscience eliminate either of the other two ahead of him. I think Dave Grohl finishes a respectable third. So I'm going to eliminate him and leave it to Freddie Mercury versus David Lee Roth and Mark McConville. I have to pick it's that. It's come down to <laughs> look. That was that was how the rotation. That's just how it that's, shook that's out. That's just how it worked out. We didn't plan this. Oh, he's leaving. <laughs> Sorry, I just have to. I have to get a visual. I know this is an audio medium, but I do oh, have boy. a visual thing that I want to show you. Oh, this is great. Oh. I have in my possession a frame <laughs> photograph of Whoa. Diamond Dave. That it's in my little office here. Yeah. In your hand that, right now I'm, in I'm the camera. I'm holding it up. I went, I stood hands. up and got it. That's how much I like David Lee Roth era Van Halen. Mm-hmm. That music is great for me. There's a nostalgia to it that you cannot argue with, even though I can, as a rational person, I can see you saying, yeah, Van Halen's trash. I can, if it's not for you, it's not for you. Mm-hmm. So I really, really don't want to make this decision. Because my true controversial take is that, do I get like final answer privileges here? My true yeah. final, like if I'm making yes. a desert island, I can take any band. If I'm making a fantasy band and I'm drafting guitarists and bassists and drummers, mm-hmm. David Lee Roth is my frontman choice for that purpose. But I, I just, I can't pick him here. Yeah. So my wow. final answer is Freddie Mercury. He's interesting. He did more with just bouncing around the rock and roll genre. It's more, I think Queen is underrated as sort of innovators. Mm-hmm. Maybe not. Maybe they're properly rated as innovators. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, Van Halen is pretty one note. And yep. I love, I really truly love that music, but I just think Queen and also Freddie's impact long term. You know, David Lee Roth right now is retiring from show business. And he's doing sort of odd pencil art. Like if you follow him online, which I do, (laughs) he's a real trip. (laughs) And I will always have a place in my heart for Diamond Dave. But I do think that the title goes to Freddie Mercury. And that is my final answer. There you go. People of the world, you just heard something that we struggle with week after week, which is how do you take what is so dear to your heart and sacrifice it in the name of the greater good? Mark McConville, not only... Have you been a fantastic guest, knowledgeable, hilarious, personable, all the things that you are in the life outside of this podcast. But you, when faced with a difficult decision, you went with what is objectively the right choice at a very subjective argument. That's what we do here. The greatest frontman of all time is Freddie Mercury. And every time I say his name, I think about Borat going, Freddie Mercury? I don't know why. It's still, in, it's in there. But he's the greatest frontman of all time. He had the look, he had the sound, he had the swagger. That band would not be anywhere near what it was with any other person. You can take any other person on this list. There's no way that Queen would be what they were without Freddie Mercury. It's he, a great way to think about it. Like, does anybody else fit in? Like, Freddie Mercury with Van Halen? I'm interested. Yep. I'm interested. <laughs> David Lee exactly. Roth yeah. with Queen? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> I like this game of oh, mix him up as uh, the choice maker. Well, maybe. Yeah. May I also tell you, in my document mm-hmm. that I typed up, I wrote, mm-hmm. Freddie Mercury is the answer. There you ah, go. You it's almost like in a magic show when like you open up the envelope <laughs> at the end and reveal it. Yeah. Oh. I mean, David Lee Roth is the front man of my heart, but yeah, Freddie is deservedly so on top. Well, this topic is closed. Asked and answered. Thank you so much, Mark McConville, for coming on the show. 
This was a treat. Yes. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Of Dude, course. You're awesome. Where do you want people to find you? Where do you want them to go listen to? At the mall. Go to the mall. Ooh. Find me at the mall. You're by the arms show. <laughs> I'm on Instagram and Twitter at Mark McCondo. And any of the dumb stuff I'm doing is going to be there. Perfect. And always worth it. Always worth your time. Worth a follow. Not only to listen to the stuff you do because you are a hilarious and talented podcaster, but also a great follow on Twitter and Instagram because you're really funny on there. Like get it. You get to see like good joke writing in action. We need more of that in our lives. Of course. This topic is closed, but there are many more topics to discuss. So please reach out to us on Twitter at we got this tweets or you can email us at we got this podcast at gmail.com or go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash we got this to talk about your favorite front people past, present, and future. Thank you to Joseph Wongo for that suggestion, by the way. Also, thank you to producer Ken Plume, researcher Kate McManus, graphic designer Uri Kelman, and QA engineer Jen Alba. And thanks, of course, to our musicians Jonathan Dinerstein and Mike Furman for our score and theme song, respectively. And thanks to you, the people of the world, without whom we would not have had a chance to sit down with our dear friend Mark McConville and figure out the greatest lead singer of all time. You are all in our band and we're taking this show on the road and we are all the lead singer. So I guess that makes us a choir more than a band. You know what? This fell apart. So I'll just say (laughs) thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For Hal Loveland, I'm Mark Gagliardi. For Mark Gagliardi, I'm Hal Loveland. And don't worry, everybody. We got this. We got this. Maximumfun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned, audience supported.